Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we'll be relocating 12 circuits from this other main breaker panel over to this emergency panel. This is part two of the Anchor Solix F38 system, which consists of two different, I believe, 9,000 watt batteries. This is instantaneous transfer from a power outage to DC power. Uh, the batteries contain an inverter, so it inverts the direct current to alternating current, which is what we use in our houses to power all of our electrical devices in our house. And so what I did here was I fished in this liquid tight non-metallic sealed conduit into the bottom of the panel and then I'm going to run two different one inch conduits from that main distribution panel into this emergency panel. If you haven't seen part one of this series you definitely should go do that. So I'm just using these little zippets. I love these things. These work better than the old plastic traditional anchors in my opinion and uh, I use them all the time. The National Electric Code does require that the work be done in a workmanlike manner, but they don't describe workmanlike manner is. What they do is they direct you to an ANSI standard, uh, which I haven't got my hands on yet, but I'm hoping to get my hands on that book so I can look at it and see exactly what kind of things they're talking about workmanlike manner. If you have questions about that, leave them in the comments or if you know where I get that book, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Tell me, does that look smooth or not? Starts there, through the wall, to the transfer switch. These two condos are carrying our branch circuits. These branch circuits will be on this side of the bus. These branch circuits will be on this side of the bus. Alright, so I do try to make my videos as informative as possible. So what I'm doing now is identifying the circuits that we're going to relocate to the emergency panel so that when the battery kicks in it'll, those circuits will be covered. We call these the emergency circuits. There's a total of 12 of them and my customers have been so kind as to identify which of those circuits we need to relocate and so right now what I'm doing is tagging the circuit breaker with a piece of tape so I know once I bring my conductors through I'm going to splice onto those particular circuits and have those circuits off once all my wiring is in place to do that, try to keep the downtime to a minimum. So, he was able to mark these with the red dots on the circuit breaker on the panel legend here. Alrighty? So what I've done is I've counted them on the right side here first. We always count the odd numbers on the right. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. So that'll coincide with those dots later, so we can identify them once we put them in this panel here. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna identify this other side real quick, and then uh, we're gonna start going to, we're gonna cut the conductors upstairs to length, try to keep them uniform. We're not allowed to tie wrap them together. It might be a little bit of a pain in the neck to get this done, uh, but I think that's the best way. The wiring I'm using here is THHN. We have 12 current carrying conductors. So the first thing we need to do is derate all of these conductors. We have 15 amp and 20 amp circuits, but we have all these conductors in this conduit. We need to derate them. And for the amount of conductors that we have here, we fall into the column between 10 and 20 conductors, which is a 50% deduction in the ampacity. Number 10, copper, has a ampacity in the 90 degree column of 40 amps. So if we did 50% of 40, we have 20 amps. So all of our 20 amp circuits are gonna be connected to this number 10 wire. For the 15 amps, we're gonna be using 20 amp wire and the full ampacity of a, tw of a number 12 THHN is 30 amps. So half of 30 amps is the full 15. So now I have 12 current carrying conductors and I'm gonna have the full ampacity available for all of my 15 and 20 amp conductors. All electrical conductors, regardless of the size of the conductors, generate heat. And these are the basic rules for ampacity adjustments to calculate for this heat so that the insulation doesn't burn away and start a fire. 
That's the main purpose of derating these conductors. More than three current carrying conductors. The ampacity of each conductor shall be reduced as shown in Table 310 Tech 15 C1, where the number of current carrying conductors in a raceway or cable exceeds three, or where single conductors and multi-conductor cables not installed in raceways are installed without maintaining spacing for a continuous length of longer than 24 inches. Each current carrying conductor of a parallel set of conductors shall be counted as a current carrying conductor. The other thing we haven't discussed is what size conduit am I going to run? So what I can do here is go to table 9, Annex C, to see exactly how many number 12s and number 10s I can put in this conduit, except table C is all the same type conductors. So what I did here is I sized them all for number 10, and I was able to run one inch non-metallic sealed conduit here between the main breaker panel and this emergency panel. The correct amount of number 10 conductors through this one inch conduit is 16. Each of the conduits has the same amount of current carrying conductors in each of them, which is 12. The current is obviously available on the ungrounded hot conductor and of course on the grounded neutral conductor, the same amount of current. And we only need to run one equipment grounded conductor based on the largest overcurrent or the largest conductor inside this conduit. So what we do is we run number 10 equipment grounded conductor and uh, that one equipment grounded conductor covers each one of those circuits inside this emergency panel. Section 250 Tech 122 is the size of the equipment grounded conductor and if you skip down from A, B and go to C, you'll see a single equipment grounded conductor shall be permitted to be installed for multiple circuits. You should leave a comment in the comments section if a lot of these code sections you were unaware of. There is so much to learn as an electrical professional uh, before he's given it a license. So I know when I was getting ready to get my license, I'd been in the trade for about 19 years and I wish I'd gotten it sooner, but it is what it is. And uh, I woke up one morning and realized I needed to get my license and get my business together. And so that's exactly what I did. And I, I became kind of like an enthusiast about the code. It really, I don't want to use the word code Nazi, but that's what other electricians would call you where you look at something and you watch a video maybe on YouTube and I'm going to leave a comment. The thing is you could say you can't do that or you have to do this, which is fine. But if you don't leave a code section to what you're referring to, you're just spitting into the wind, I think. Um, so that's why I, when I discuss something on this channel, as far as code goes, I try to make sure I leave a small code section so you don't think I'm just talking out of my ass. Uh, I have a feeling that I have enough subscribers that really enjoy the content that I put out and um, and they get to learn some of these code sections maybe they weren't aware of or they're doing something at work and you know their journeyman or their boss is telling them you got to do it like this because that's what the code says but you never really become aware of the code. Uh, this will get you, will get your feet wet so to speak, get your feet on the ground running so you understand ex kind of what's going on but to be honest with you, in my professional opinion until you actually get into that classroom and start doing this work and answering questions and reviews and taking exams, that's when everything changes because you can combine both worlds of actually working doing this work and then actually sitting down at night at a desk and really understanding the code book and the different sections uh, of our trade. There's really, a, really a lot to learn. Um, and then, of course, the National Electric Code has a lot of information, so you're never going to memorize everything. But what we teach is the way to understand how to find the answer that you're looking for. And then naturally, over the years, you're going to just know these things because you've done them so many times. Uh, I, like you see here, I do mostly residential service. So a lot of the stuff I don't really need to look up. But for this, I did because this is not something I do every day where I transfer uh, 12 different branch circuits from one panel to another for emergency service. A lot of times with the portable generator wiring that I do, I will just um, put the interlock on that main breaker panel and then you're on your own. But before we could do that and before they were popular, we would have to put in an emergency panel and relocate those circuits. And so if there wasn't a lot of room, you would have to do what I'm doing here with the conduits. But if you have more room, then you could just take those circuits right out of that panel and put them into the emergency panel. So there is a lot 
to learn as far as derating conductors and the type of conductors and the ampacity ratings, uh, more than three current counter conductors. And then there's also another section where if let's just say you're up on a roof or the ambient temperature in a room goes through a boiler room. And so there's also a, a deduction in ampacity um, for situations like that. So there really is a lot to learn. And if you're an electrician and you're considering being a professional in this industry, don't wait. Get into school as soon as you can. Get your journeyman certificate and then get your license and go out on your own. It's really the best um, option as far as being an electrician in the trade as far as I'm concerned. Now that all the branch circuits have been installed inside this main lug only panel, that's what MLO stands for, main lug only. This is a sub panel, but there is no description for a sub panel in the National Electric Code. And what I'm installing here are nine 20 amp circuits and three 15 amp circuits. So I use the orange number 10 for all my 20s and I use the red number 12 for all my 15 amp circuits so I wouldn't be confused uh, as I'm installing the circuits here. So because I have such a limited area to work in here, I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. So I've ran all of my circuits that are going to be on the left side of the emergency panel or in this conduit to the left, okay? They include three 20 amp circuits and three 15 amp circuits. All my 20 amp circuits are orange, number 10 THHN, and all my 20 amp circuits are number 12 THHN. I'm going to go over why we do that momentarily here but let me show you how i identify each of these circuits so because they're so close to the emergency panel all i do is just give this a little tug and i'm able to see which you can't see off camera here the conductor inside the emergency panel and i'm able to identify what number that is because all the odd numbers are on the left and all of the even numbers are on the right so i have all of these now numbered so when i take them off the left side right here we're gonna, this is gonna be one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11. And we're just gonna match it up to the appropriate conductor that's going to be the circuit in the emergency panel. Once all my connections were made, what I'm doing here is I'm turning off all the circuit breakers before turning them on. I've energized this main lug only panel on the utility side. And so now I'm just verifying that all my circuits are working. All right, so the two go on top here. Uh-huh. And, and so, then, yep. And then it just wraps around and then there is two connections right underneath that, that smart panel. Okay. So then this will go right underneath here. I can't wrap this. And the two are in the front. Uh, we're going to go, it doesn't matter which one, right? It one or matter, two? No, one or two, no. I'm gonna think this will be one, okay? And that just snaps in almost like a magnet yep. in there. All right, so I'm just about ready now. The owner of the house, Joe, is downstairs. He's hooking up the battery that's fully charged. 
and the only thing that I'm worried about now is whether or not I hooked up those current transformers the correct way. I think I'm doing it the correct way, but I won't know until I turn off this emergency panel, the main breaker. This is the emergency disconnect and service disconnect, as you guys know from my videos. And this is how some people do their service upgrades. Look at all the duct seal that this guy used. It's not bad, There's nothing wrong with that. I might have done a couple more straps, but it meets the code. This is a nice, nice job here. Okay, Joe, we ready? Yep, we're ready. All right, awesome. <clears throat> it didn't come back on, right? No, I think. Okay, so Joe pointed out to me that the breaker on the transfer switch panel supplying power from the battery to the panel was off so we turned it on now we're going to turn off this main disconnect again perfect how about that how about that yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right joe yes. let's um why don't we go around and make sure all the emergency circuits that you want and see what's on and what's not on okay okay so this is the circuit breaker that <clears throat> disconnects power from the battery to the transfer switch and this was off so that's why it didn't transfer the first time so we are on right here and all the circuits we're on dc power right now and by the way i did find out from joe that the inverter here uh, i'm sorry the battery does have the built-in inverter from dc to ac it's a pretty cool system i would say He's got two batteries he's gonna hook up the other one i think he's gonna charge it right now and then you have these ports right on the bottom that connect the connection's real good i think it's magnetic it snaps in a uh, very well thought out system here and uh boy i'll tell you what this is a lot of work but it's a nice system very nice now the power goes out he's all set and ready to go and the last step for me here is to schedule a final inspection and then we'll be on to the next one so if you want this work done at your house be sure to hit me up in the comments or email me electricianron at mac.com thank you guys for watching this video and see you on the next one